Starting us off at number 10, we have sea pigs. If you think these things look anything like actual land pigs, you are sorely mistaken. They are indeed pink, but other than that, they look like something from outer space. These undersea creatures are actually a species of sea cucumber. Their scientific names are scotoplanes, and they are found at the bottom of the sea floor in the colder regions on Earth. You will probably never actually come across a live one for that matter, but if you could, they would be able to fit in the palm of your hand or about four to six inches in length. So I guess that makes them more like sea miniature pigs, maybe? I don't know. These weird pink little creatures can often be found in groups all facing the exact same way, and they feed off scum that they find in the mud on the ocean floor, which include decaying plants and animals. So they truly do eat <laughs> like pigs. At number nine, we have the skunk bear. Just kidding, that's just its nickname, which I didn't know at first. But these animals are actually wolverines. Have you ever wondered what these things actually are other than muscular X-Men characters? Well, these creatures actually live in the Arctic and subarctic regions and are nowhere near as cute and cuddly as they look. Okay, well, they are cute, but let me tell you, these things are dangerous. They have been known to take on wolves and bears with their ferocious claws, which is why the X-Men superhero is named Wolverine. Anyway, there are no known Wolverine attacks on humans, but that's just as long as we leave them alone. And they are also known to travel up to about 15 miles per day. And with their razor sharp claws, I'm sure no animal will stop it in its tracks. At number eight, we have permafrost. What is permafrost? Well, permafrost is basically frozen solid ground that stays frozen for over a period of two years. You can notice this kind of natural effect in areas of higher elevation where the temperature on average falls below freezing. The ground beneath your feet will stay frozen completely for years. Imagine a Canadian winter. If you're not from an area of the world where it snows, then just imagine a thick layer of pure ice on top of your property that never ever melts. That basically is what it would be like to live on permafrost. So for anyone that ever wanted to go or try ice skating, grab your stick and lace up. At number seven, we have my favorite one on the list. We have the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. You have probably heard of these before in movies or in science class, but in case you haven't, the Northern Lights are multicolored lights with blues, purples, greens, and whatever, and they move and they shine throughout the northern sky. This happens when particles with an electric charge are released from the sun into the northern atmosphere of Earth and are mixed with gases such as nitrogen and oxygen. I am lucky enough that I have been a witness to the Northern Lights a few times as I grew up a bit more north, but I've never actually been that far north to see them in their full glory. But it is on my bucket list to go as far north as I can to see these amazing lights because I truly do think they are one of the most magical natural lights one can see. Weird, but breathtaking. At number six, we have New Islands. Back in 2013, near the fjords in the Arctic, a new island was discovered. This island was only recently discovered because it is actually split off from North Brook Island in Russia. With global warming affecting our colder regions more and more, the melting of the ice caps and larger ice land masses lead to more splits within the ice. Due to this, we see more and more ice structures appearing and disappearing all of the time. So we might continue to see new land masses in the polar areas of Earth, which sounds really cool, but Let's hope we don't find any more. Let's keep that ice frozen, shall we? At number five, coming in at our halfway point, we have bounties of oil. Most of the world's industries are constantly in search of oil, producing oil, buying oil, selling oil, all that fun, outdated stuff. But funny enough, in a study that was completed back in 2008, there's reportedly 20% of the world's undiscovered oil deposits up in the Arctic. No wonder Santa has been camping out up there for this long. His entire workshops run on the stuff. But seriously, it's 2021. How have we not exhausted this source yet either? Well, it's because with the ice melting from global warming and such unpredictable terrain, we don't think we are ready or have the ability just yet to retrieve that oil. If anything were to happen, it could be catastrophic. So for now, let's just leave the oil where it is and maybe work on a more green and lasting resource, huh? At number four, we have the half year of darkness and half year of light. That's right, if you live up in the North Pole, then starting September 25th, you will experience a half year of darkness, and then another half year of light after that. How does this work? Well, the Earth is on a tilt of 23 and a half degrees. The Earth then orbits around the sun, and starting in late September and ending in the end of March, the North Pole is on such an angle that most of the sunlight doesn't actually hit it. That being said, it doesn't go immediately pitch black because the sun does reach the pole for a bit longer than September 25th, but eventually it does become dark as night. After March 22nd, though, the exact opposite happens. So if you want to live up in the North Pole, maybe figure out 
if you're a night hawk or an early bird first and then decide which season is best suited for you. Oh, and uh, <laughs> say hi to Santa for me. Starting us off in our top three, at number three is a frost virus. Yeah, guess what folks, there's another virus out there and it's in the North Pole. Recently, scientists completing tests in the North Pole found a 30,000 year old virus that stayed alive in the ice. Yikes. I know what you're thinking, we have had a rough year and a half already with this coronavirus crap that we don't need any more of this stuff and I agree with you, but luckily for us, this frost virus doesn't actually prey on humans. Scientists have called this the molivirus or sometimes even known as behemoth. Why? <laughs> I don't know and maybe I don't want it. But scientists have also discovered more viruses up there, but it hasn't been reported exactly how many. For now, I got other things to worry about though, so like, as long as I know this molivirus doesn't prey on us humans, I'm okay. It actually only preys on amoebas, so they won't ravage our planet anytime soon, <laughs> we think. At number two, we have ancient mummies. Back in 2017 in Siberia, scientists discovered something quite surprising deep within the ice, or should I say, someone. In the frozen depths, Siberian scientists uniced what is believed to be a 900 year old Russian woman mummy. She was found within the permafrost just within the Arctic Circle. It is believed that she is from a medieval civilization and was the first woman to be discovered at the site in a long ago society that was made up of mostly men. What then happened was scientists also uniced a mummy baby not too far away from the woman. As sad as that may sound, these findings brought huge joy to the scientists because it brought us the possibility to learn more about this medieval Arctic civilization. That's really cool and all, but really, I just want them to unearth some elf mummies. I want to know how long you've been up there, Santa. Huh? And finally, coming in at number one and my second favorite on the list, it is just so wickedly mysterious, we have unexplained holes. Back in April of 2018, researchers and pilots flying overhead discovered these large crater-like looking holes. According to National Geographic, scientists still have no freaking clue on what is making these holes. However, there is a color change in the ice right around the perimeter of each hole, which leads scientists to believe that these holes are the result of a temperature change and that the ice is melting. Okay, you know what, as of right now, I guess scientists do have one hypothesis on why these holes are appearing. They believe that it might be due to the fast melting polar ice caps and that these are just small little areas that warm up and give way, but I don't know, that doesn't really make sense to me because it seems to me that these holes are melting on the surface, not underneath. So maybe it's from a landing vehicle, maybe not human tech, maybe it's the aliens, I don't know, or maybe maybe I just think way too much about aliens these days and you know that's that's probably more like it. But anyway, there you go. Unexplained holes. Starting us off at number 10, we have no penguins. Where did they go? Oh, the humanity. Okay, most people I know love these cute little short furred waddling birds, and I think as long as you go to one of those poles, you're gonna see some happy feet action. Well, wrong. Penguins actually only live in the southern hemisphere, down near the South Pole. The truth is, even though the north has a similar climate to the south, the land up north is still rather unstable for most wildlife to live on. These little guys may be on the lighter side, but nevertheless, you have to visit. Antarctica and not the Arctic to get those sweet penguin views. Also, may I just say, unlike the movie Happy Feet, it is not proven that they can actually dance and sing like they do in the movie. Mostly they just waddle, but that's still cool, right? At number nine, we have dog races. Who let the dogs out? Well, probably some guy in the Arctic. One of the most popular forms of transportation up in the Northern Hemisphere due to all the snow is dog sledding. What kind of dogs? Well, specifically, huskies. Huskies are beautiful, energetic dogs that are usually used to to sled across the Arctic terrain with two to 13 dogs pulling a sled depending on the size of the load that they are carrying. But these dog sleds are not just for transportation. One of the most popular sports in all of the north is dog sled races. Many of the human and canine athletes live up north all year round training for the famous Iditarod race which goes from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska. The championships are then held in the North Pole where Santa hands the winners a cash money prize and throws the dogs a bone. Okay, just kidding, but I will say I have gone dog sledding twice in my life and it is wicked fun. Especially when you have dogs that take off immediately after you dismount your sled. <laughs> Moving on. At number eight, we have water unicorns, or should I say narwhals? Many people call these magnificent creatures water unicorns, and they are honestly one of the best examples of animals that adapt to their surroundings. These whales can be found in the Arctic waters with these massive unicorn horns on the top of their heads. Now, over the years, their horns have 
become larger as it helps these animals swim and break through the ice. These awesome creatures can weigh up to 4,200 pounds as well as can grow up to 17 feet in length. These whales even sometimes have sword fights with their long horns and it's a wicked cool sight to see and is worth a trip to the Arctic just to see one of these guys. But keep your distance, those things have a rather sharp end. At number seven, we have flipping poles. That's right, while it might not be that often, the North and South Poles can flip. The last time was actually about 780,000 years ago. In one of my other videos I did, I talked about this phenomenon, and by the sounds of it, we are actually overdue for an altering of the poles. So, what's gonna happen? Well, scientists don't believe much. Sure, it could throw off our compasses and some technology, and the climate change might throw us for a bit of a loop, but nothing catastrophic. <laughs> that we know of. At number six, we have Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Chris Hemsworth. In the old pulp magazines back in the 1930s and 40s, a character by the name of Doc Savage took the world by storm. Doc was a super heroic action character that many loved to read about during some of those pretty dark times. But interest in the action hero has resurfaced with the possibility of a movie being made. The two main actors in talks of playing the character are Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Chris Hemsworth. This character actually is based in the North Pole and not in a city like other superheroes. So very soon, we could be seeing Hollywood North go even further up north. The only last question is, are you Team Rock or Team Thor? Let me know down in the comments. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have a Russian flag. Back in 2007, a group of Russians traveled up to the North Pole and dove down to the bottom of the deep Arctic sea and planted a flag. <laughs> well, okay, kinda. A robot did because it's way too freaking cold for human beings to swim down there, but no, sorry, Russia. It doesn't mean that you own the North Pole now because that's still Santa's, duh. But it does mean that you were the first to leave your mark. So great, good for you. The USS Nautilus did float over the spot back in 1959, but they didn't have high-tech robots at the time to brag about their travels. So sorry, US, it's okay, you guys have the moon anyway. At number four, we have Float Central. Beneath all that crystal-like ice and large ice masses is just Arctic water. Basically, everything you see up there are just large ice land masses, also known as glaciers, just floating around. So all the wildlife and people that are found up there are actually just floating around on pieces of ice. <laughs> cool, right? Well, not really when things keep melting. So let's try and work on that global warming thing again, huh? Or else, <laughs> you float too. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have a no time zone. Do we share time? Are we all just lost in time? Is time one continuous timeline or is it a constant never ending loop? Who the hell freaking knows? Well, one thing we do know for sure is that the North Pole actually has no exact time zone. It's timeless. So what's that mean? Well, it just means that you won't really know what time zone to go by once you're up in the North Pole, but that's okay. If you're hanging with Santa Claus, he's a world traveler anyway, and I'm sure he can just take you to wherever the hell you wanna go. At number two, we have a classic first, the worst, second, the best situation. Who discovered the North Pole first? Well, that's a bit of a tough question depending on who you ask. Robert E. Peary, a famous dog sled racer, apparently was the first to sled on the terrestrial North Pole back in 1909. But Frederick Albert Cook also says that he discovered the same area of land back in 1908, but he just didn't document it. So who is the real founder here? This might be a real case of finders keepers, losers weepers, but you know, if Cook is telling the truth, then it is all his, but there's no way to know for sure. So next time you're all out there discovering new lands and territories, don't forget to save a few picks and boomerangs for the gram, huh? And finally, coming in at our number one spot, we have the infamous man himself, Santa! That's right, remember in my first video when I said that Santa was real and anyone who didn't agree with me could fight me? Yeah, that's right, I mean it, step up. Chumps. I actually have proof. Every single year around Christmas time, December 21st to be specific, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, actually tracks the Jolly Man himself. And you can check online for updates to see where Santa is flying over and what he is doing to get ready for his big, big night. So. Boom! Proof that Santa is real and there's not a freaking thing you can do about it. Except weep your sweet little eyes out on Christmas morning when you non-believers get a stocking full of coal. <laughs> ha, chumps. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Greenland shark. Sometimes referred to as gray sharks, these guys are a large shark that is closely related to the Pacific and Southern sleeper sharks. These guys have the longest known lifespan of all vertebrate species at an estimated 250 to 500 years years, which is unbelievable. These guys are generalist feeders, which means they consume a wide variety of different foods, but they themselves are actually toxic to eat. Since these guys live in the cold 
depths of the Arctic and North Atlantic, they are quite isolated from human activity, so they aren't thought of as much of a threat despite their large size. In our number 9 spot today we have the musk ox. These hoofed mammals are native to the Arctic and it isn't really hard to tell by their thick coats. These guys are one smelly animal, especially the males of the species who have a strong odor from season rut. These guys are actually more closely related to sheep and goats than to oxen despite their name, but they are in a genus of their own. The modern musk ox is actually the last member in its line that first evolved in the temperate regions of Asia before adapting to a much colder climate. These guys have long curved horns that are seen on both males and females, and adults of these animals weigh on average about 630 pounds, and they can reach speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour or 37 miles per hour, which truly is insane. In our number 8 spot today we have a stoat. Also referred to as a short tailed weasel or ermine, these guys are actually quite a widespread creature. They have quite a controversial history, especially when it comes to the 19th century however. At that time they were introduced into New Zealand in an attempt to control the rabbit populations, but instead they just had a devastating impact on the native bird populations. They were actually voted to be one of the world's top 100 worst invaders. These guys are small but mighty and they are absolutely ruthless as, rather than digging their own burrows, they were instead seen just taking over those of the animal that they previously preyed upon. In our number 7 spot today we have the reindeer bot fly. Now for the strongest contender for grossest creature on this list we have these horrible little flies. These guys deal with the cold climate by taking refuge in the nose of reindeer where they also like to lay their eggs. I know. I hate it too. These are actually parasitic to reindeer as they infect their nose area. The adults of these creatures are active over the arctic summer and they have the ability to fly quite quickly. While flying quickly they also have a very strong sense of smell that allows them to easily find reindeer from far distances. In our number 6 spot today we have the puffin. The atlantic puffin is the smallest of the 4 puffin species, but they are actually the most numerous species. They are easy to identify because of their distinct beak which features a bright orange red tip and a blue or grey triangle that is closer to their face. White stripes can also be seen during the breeding season. Many people refer to puffins as the clowns of the sea because of their sweet and endearing but just sort of awkward behavior. These guys tend to spend fall and winter in the open ocean of the northern seas, but in the spring they return to coastal areas for breeding. To do so they nest in cliff top colonies and they dig into a burrow where they then lay a single egg. Once the chicks hatch, after about 6 weeks they are fully fledged and one night they will make their way into the sea only to swim away from shore where they won't return to land for several years. We have the arctic bumblebee. Bumblebees haven't necessarily been having an easy time lately in general, but the arctic bumblebee perhaps has the most difficult task of all of the bees, and that is because of the harsh cold climate that they live in. These guys can be found in the most northern areas of Alaska, Canada, northern Scandinavia, and Russia, and because they live in these cold places, they have to go to greater lengths in order to regulate the temperature of their little fuzzy bodies. Basically, they use their large wing muscles in order to sort of shiver, which then helps them keep warm. Another way they maintain their body heat is by making use of sunlight. In these cold climates when possible, you will definitely see them doing their busy bee work in the light. In our number 4 spot today we have a lemming. These cute little guys are a mouse like rodent that, as adults, are about 150 millimeters in length, with 20 of those being their tail. The population of these creatures has seemed to have quite a drastic fluctuation over the years which many believe is likely due to changes in the weather seen in the harsh climate they live in. What is really remarkable about this cycle isn't how high the population reaches when it's at its highest point, but rather how scarce the population is during the lows. So much so that it causes experts to worry about possible extinction during these times, even though the cycle is only about 4 years long. During the spring on a high population year, these guys will be seen on lake and sea ice, but they don't really move in an oriented manner. Like they don't all go north or all go south, they just 
just sort of go wherever they feel and they're rarely seen in large groups. In our number three spot today, we have the doll sheep. These guys are of course a type of sheep, but these ones like to inhabit the subarctic and arctic ranges of Alaska, the Yukon, and the Mackenzie Mountains in the Northwest Territories. These sheep are about three feet tall at the shoulder or just under a meter, and they tend to live to be about 12 to 16 years old. During the winter season, it is said that adults of this species lose about 16% of their body mass, and for the young, they are said to lose as much as 40% depending on the severity of the winter weather. In order for these guys to figure out their social social order and dominance rank, they have a few different behaviors, but the most popular one is likely the head on collision that they have with their horns. These behaviors are mostly seen in the rams or the males of the species, but sometimes are seen in the ewes or the females as well. In our number 2 spot today we have the rock ptarmigan. These guys are a medium sized bird that belongs to the grouse family. They are actually the official bird for the territory of Nunavut, and they are the official game bird of Newfoundland and Labrador. Unlike many arctic inhabiting birds, these guys do not gain a bunch of mass in order to hibernate over the winter season, and this is because of their limited capacity for fat storage. Depending on where exactly these birds are found, their diet differs, and it also changes based on what is seasonally available. Many of the males of this species emit a plethora of quote, guttural snores and rattles, which are often directed at other males. In our number one spot today we have ribbon seals. This seal species is found in the arctic and subarctic regions of the South Pacific Ocean, and they are quite easy to spot and distinguish due to their gorgeous coloration, which features two wide white stripes and two white circles against dark fur. These guys are actually the only species in their genus, and while during some seasons these guys are icebound, during the rest of the year they prefer to spend their time in the open water. During their time at sea there is less known about their habits as they tend to go quite far from land, but since they almost always come back to land, Land, we have been able to observe them a decent amount. One thing that was quite interesting that I read about these creatures is that if they unfortunately find themselves caught in a kind of net, they will actually fake or play dead. Mm -hmm. 